In this screencast video lecture, we will try to understand about the bacterial growth. That is, what is bacterial growth? What are its phases? During every phase, how the cells are responding? All these things will be covered under this topic. Bacterial growth is the division of one bacteria into two cells through the process of binary fission. Say for example, during the course of a growth and division, a bacteria or an archaeal cell may synthesize an estimated 1800 different types of proteins and more than 400 different types of RNA molecule and 4 complete copy of the genomic DNA. Finally, cytoplasmic membrane and a cell wall is formed that is used to surround the newly formed cell after the division. Next, we look at certain terms meaning. What is generation time? It is defined as the time required for a population of cells to double in number. Whereas, growth rate refers to increase in the numbers or cell mass per unit time. Next, we try to look at the different types of cell division. Prokaryotes maintain their shapes during the process of asexual reproduction. There is no any sexual reproduction there in the prokaryotic organism. So, among the various asexual reproduction type, binary transverse fission is an important form of cell division, followed by budding. And finally, one more important cell division is a fragmentation, which is commonly occurring there in the mycelial bacterial groups, mainly in actinobacteria or streptomycetes. Next, we look at the points related to the bacterial growth, that is bacterial growth curve. A bacterial growth can be well analyzed there in a closed system, which is referred as a batch culture. That is the way in which you can be able to analyze the growth of the bacteria. Here, the batch culture is also referred as a closed system, the one in which culture conditions vary over the time period due to metabolic activities of the organism. Especially after the inoculation, the process is usually run in excess of the substrate. Here, the nutrient concentration affects both the growth rate and yield of the cultures. Thus, when a bacterial growth is analyzed as in a batch culture, the following growth phases may be visualized. It includes lag phase, exponential or log phase, stationary phase or idiophase and the final one is a death phase. You can see all these different phases of the culture over a time period there in the curve shown in the right hand side. First, we try to look at the points related to the lag phase. When microbes are inoculated or introduced into a fresh culture medium, there won't be any increase in the cell numbers occurs especially during the lag phase, that is adjusting towards the condition. Cell division does not take place in this phase, no net increase in cell mass. However, cells synthesize the new components that are required for the cell division. The cell subjected to the growth in new media may be old type of cells, so they may be depleted of ATP, essential growth factors and ribosomes. So, in the lag phase, all these essential constituents need to be synthesized before cell is getting into the division. The lag phase tenure can be determined by the condition of the microbes and the nature of the medium use. That is, it could be of a long duration when injured cells are transferred or stock cultures stored in the refrigerator or in the minus 80 freezers for several weeks or inoculated into a fresh medium. The lag phase may be of a short duration under the condition that young cells are transferred to a medium similar in composition in which that have been earlierly stored. The next phase is log phase or exponential growth phase. During this phase, bacteria grow and divide at a maximal growth rate possibly given by their genetic potential, nature of medium and the condition under which they have been incubated. During this phase, population is so uniform, especially in the terms of chemical and physiological properties of the cells. Therefore, exponential cultures are used for biochemical as well as physiological studies there in the laboratory. This phase is also referred as a balanced growth phase. That is, all cellular constituents are manufactured at a constant rate relative to each other. During this phase, cells have precise ability to regulate the synthesis of various compounds ensuring that 
each biomolecules are made in appropriate relative amount for efficient assembly into the final structure of the cells. Compounds synthesized during this period of active multiplication are generally referred as a primary metabolites. This includes amino acids, alcohol, organic acids and polysaccharides. During this phase, the growth rate is constant, cells dividing and doubling at regular intervals. The final net growth or yield of cell increases with initial amount of limiting nutrient present there in the medium. So, this becomes the basis for microbiological assays for vitamin and growth factor that affects the microbial growth. On prolonging of this phase, the cell enter into a stage called as a late log phase which marks the transition to a stationary phase. These changes occur in response to multiple factors that are inevitable there in a closed system of cultivation. These things mainly depend upon the depletion of nutrient and build up of waste products there inside the inoculated closed system of cultivation. Eventually, the next phase is a stationary phase. That is, in this phase, the growth ceases, that is, growth stops mainly due to depletion of the nutrient, accumulation of the toxic products and exhaustion of the biological space that is no space available for cells to multiply and the oxygen concentration also lowers. All these things makes the growth of the organism to be stopped there and thus in this phase the growth curve commonly looks in a horizontal manner. The stationary phase is attained by bacteria when the population of the closed cultivation vessel is around 10 power 9 cells per ml. However, the same stationary phase is resulted in protozoa and algal culture at a 10 power 6 cells itself per ml. During this phase, the total number of viable bacteria remains constant. This may be due to the balance between cell division and cell death that has been occurring there during this phase. In this phase, cells become more round in shape and more resistant to harmful chemicals and even radiation. The changes in the composition of their cell wall, cell membrane are also occurring. As their surrounding environment changes, cells start synthesizing special enzymes and protein which collectively give rise to a new group of metabolites called as a secondary metabolite. This includes low molecular weight antibiotics and high molecular weight toxins production. Look in this diagram, you can able to see the secondary metabolite production starting during the start of the stationary phase and it becomes peak during the actual functioning of the stationary phase. Whereas the primary metabolite production are very high during the logarithmic phase of the cultivation. Thus in primary metabolites, amino acids, organic acids are produced whereas in secondary metabolites, antibiotics and high molecular weight toxins are produced. The next point explains about the physiological response of the cells towards the stationary phase. Say in gram positive bacteria, they start producing endospores during this phase and in other groups of bacteria, a variety of starvation related proteins could be produced. This includes proteins like CST that is peptide utilization protein BOLA is a starvation protein that regulates the expression of several other gene products say for example it regulates DACA gene product as well as the OTSBA gene product. Thus during this phase various kinds of chaprons were also formed. Chaprons refers to special protein that prevents protein denaturation and they help in the renaturation of the damaged protein. So through all these mechanisms, cells become more harder to be killed and it enables survival of the bacteria during the starvation conditions of the stationary phase. The final phase is the death phase. So if the incubation is prolonging, that is even after the stationary phase, cells will start entering into the death phase. In this phase, viable cell population usually decreases. In this phase, the total cell count remains constant since cells simply fail to lyse after the death. So, under such instances, the viability of the cell could be ascertained by incubating them in a fresh medium. When it is incubated in a fresh medium, the cell should not grow. That is, 
their inability to grow and multiply is usually assumed as a cell death. In another term, death is defined here as a irreversible loss of the ability to reproduce. The death rate seems to decrease after population has been drastically reduced there in the experimental vessel. And this is due to the extended survival of particularly resistant cells. And finally, if cell counting is done by a turbidometric measurements or microscopic counts, it's not possible to obviously look at the death phase of the cultures. Whereas, this death phase can be clearly observed only when cells were subjected to plate counting. And finally, we look at the factors that affects the bacterial cell growth. These factors can be totally divided into two, that is environmental factors affecting growth and sources of metabolic energy affecting the growth. Here, the environmental factors become a main source that is affecting the growth of the bacteria there in a continuous vessel based cultivation. Under the environmental factors affecting growth, the first one is a nutrient. It includes the growth factor, essential metabolites and even how it changes from a autotrophs and heterotrophic group of organisms. And the second important factor is the pH of the medium. The third one is the gaseous requirements for the growth of the organism. It is mainly how oxygen is affecting their growth. And then the next one is level of carbon dioxide there in the cultivation vessel that determines the different phases of growth of the organism. Next one is the temperature and fifth one is the ionic strength and osmotic pressure and finally light as an important factor affecting the growth of the organisms.